Good evening, everyone, and a very warm welcome for today's webinar. On behalf of NISM and India Bonds, I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you all for the today's webinar on Bond Investment Made Easy. Myself, Ami Sayed, working with NISM. Along with me, we have today a renowned speaker from the industry who will be taking today's webinar. We have Mr. Sunny Mirchandani, Director, India Bonds Founding Team, and Dr. Kapil Shimal, Associate Professor at NISM. Before we begin, let me allow to give a quick introduction of our speakers. Dr. Kapil Shimal is Associate Professor at NISM. He is having more than 13 years of experience into academics and one year into, into corporate. He has started his career with ICSA Prudential LIC and worked with institutes like Prestige Institute of Management and Research, Indore, Symbiosis University of Applied Science, Indore, Marwadi University, Rajkot, etc. His last assignment was with PIMR Indore. His main area of teaching and research is financial planning, portfolio management, derivatives, financial modeling, financial management. He has conducted many investment awareness programs on behalf of SEBI, NSE, and ICA India. Dr. Shimal has received Best Faculty Award by Dainik Bhaskar in the year 2012. He has also received Best PhD Thesis Award by Jaipuri Institute of Management Indore in the year 2018. He is into editorial board or and reviewer member of International Journal of Accounting and Financial Management Research. Dr. Shimas has done his PhD in management from Mohanlal Sukhadev University, Udaipur. He has also cleared uh, net exam RPSC set in management in year 2012. Now let me introduce our other speaker, Mr. Sunny Mirchandani. Sunny Mirchandani is a founding team member of India Bonds. Uh, who having 18 years uh, more than 18 years of experience in investment banking, debt capital markets, and real estate financing. He was earlier associated with Citigroup and Eki Capital as a part of their investment banking team. In his last stream, he headed the real estate underwriting book for NBFC arm of Eki Capital Finance and have been instrumental in concluding transactions of REITs in REITs and renewable energy space. Mr. Mirchandani's career highlights include private roles at AK Group, where he managed high quality asset back credit and structural transactions. Mr. Mirchandani holds a postgraduate degree in uh, business management from NMIMS Mumbai and bachelor's in finance from Mumbai University, making him a well rounded leader in financial technology and investment strategies. Before we start or before we begin, let me tell you what are the major areas which we are going to cover today. The basics or the major areas which are we going to focus for today's webinar will be basics of bonds. What are the benefits of investing in bonds? What are the risks associated with investing in bonds? What are the yield or return and factors affecting it? We will be taking all the questions at the end of the webinar. So requesting all the participants to put their queries in the Q&A board only. Our speakers will be happy to answer all your queries. So without taking any further time, I would like to hand over the webinar to our renowned speaker over to you, sir. Thank you, Tom. Uh, thank you so much, Amit, for the introduction for uh, Dr. Srimal and myself. Uh, before we begin the webinar, I'd just like to, uh, I hope I'm audible for everybody. Uh, uh, before we begin the webinar, I'll just quickly give you a brief in terms of uh, what are the options, what exactly you will learn from this webinar. Uh, just give me one second. I'm just sharing the screen. Okay, great. So uh, thank you so much to NISM for inviting me and uh, Dr. Srimal also for this. What's in it for you as an attendee? What will you be covering? Like Ahmed pointed out, uh, very basic terminologies that is required for investing or understanding bond as an asset class. Uh, how you should read uh, the credit rating of any bond. Uh, what are the various categories of credit ratings, which is a high risk, which is a low risk credit rating before making an investment in bond or advising your investors before making an investment in bond. What is the return that you can expect from bonds across various rating criteria? So we'll show you some examples also. Uh, what Mr. Uh, Dr. Srimal also will be covering is the risk that you need to identify while making an investment or advising your investors while investing in a bond. Uh, just something that NISM has uh, helped us is that everybody who attends today's webinar uh, will also be getting a certificate of participation from today's webinar. 
uh, we'll try to cover a few questions as well uh, in the Q and A section, which will give you a complete insight in terms of what are the points that we'll be covering. Everything from a basic to uh, what are the difficulties that you can face, everything from this webinar. Uh, this webinar will be like a 30, 30, 35 minute session and then we'll have a 15, 20 minute Q&A live session as well. Some of you have posted queries also on, while registering. We'll be addressing those queries as well. Uh, I'll hand over the mic to you, Dr. Srimal, uh, for this webinar and uh, we'll take it forward from there. Thank so you. thank you, Sunny Ji, and thank you, Amir, uh, for the introduction. I think I'm audible. Yes. Very much. Yes. So the today's webinar is basically the idea about what bond market is and how it will be uh, useful. So uh, the first thing, what bonds are the basic of the bonds that we we all know. Uh, as we know, the there are the various asset classes available into the market for an investment. But this uh, particular webinar will be basically for the bond and uh, we'll discuss the bond is. So what bond is? So let's take a very simple example. So this is a financial instrument where one can invest into the market, especially when one can invest into the market with a fixed term. Okay, now we can say about the for the fixed term, when the company is coming with a bond as an issue into the market. So the first thing is that the bond is having the fixed term into the part. Number two, it gives the regular income to you in the form of the coupon. Okay, the coupon rate, it is, it is mentioned in the bond when it has been issued into the market. Okay, number two, that is a coupon that has been given to you. And number three, uh, that we can say whenever the bond is issued to you, it is known as the relationship between the investor that you are, a, you will be called as a lender to the company and the company will be the issuer that will be the borrower. So it is nothing but the, uh, nothing but the company is taking a loan from you. On that loan, company is going to provide the interest till the maturity to you. So that is a simple uh, concept of the bond is there. Now, generally, when we say about the bond market, which is available into in Indian market, so bond market will give the fixed rate of interest for the particular time. So that that is known as a plain Manila bond. We'll go over the various types of bonds will be there. So that is a plain Manila bond. I'm just giving the example of the plain Manila bond, where bond is having the face value, certain coupon rate, and the maturity. So I'm just giving one example. When the companies issue a bond. With a face value of 1 lakh rupees, with a face value of 1 lakh rupees, one bond face value is less than 1 lakh rupees, with a coupon rate of 7% and the maturity is 10 years. So the company is going to give you 7% of 1 lakh rupees, that is nothing but 7,000 rupees per annum as a coupon or the interest to you till the maturity. And at the time of maturity, company will give 1 lakh rupees back to you. So when you hold a bond for, till maturity, till the maturity company is going to give the fixed return to you. That is the plain vanilla bond example I am just discussing. Okay, so the bond is having a fixed term. That is the most important part because there can be uh, the redeemable, redeemable bond is there, but generally bond which are issued into the market or Indian market, that is into the fix, into the nature of fixed term should be there. And the, it is it is called the loan. Now we'll say about the loan. So how this loan will be useful to you Whenever the time of the liquidation, the company will give first right to the bondholder at the time of the liquidation. Okay, so whatever the value will be given, the first right will be given to the bondholder. So that is another important part. And you lend the money for the specific period, that is a part. Now, we'll say about the, what are the various characteristics of the bond market. So first characteristic is the issuer or a company. So whenever company is coming with a bond, to issue into the market. It is just like the process of the uh, IPO that we can say. So the company has to uh, build up a prospectus, the bond trustee will be, or the debenture trustee will be appointed. The company has to draft a prospectus to the SEBI, then SEBI will approve and board of directors meeting. And so and so will be there. All the parts will be there. Okay, so the company will give an overall picture about the bond to the market. So company must take an approval from the SEBI. Number one part is there if bond is going to list into the market. That is a part. Number two, generally the bond is having the face value of 1 lakh rupees. So each bond which is issued into the market as per the SEBI regulation, it should be the 1 lakh rupees is the face value of a bond. Number three, the bond should pay the interest rate. So as here the example is given 10% per annum. Now interest can be paid either annually or half yearly or quarterly or monthly that depending upon the nature of a bond. So when you go into the market, you will find that some bonds are paying the half yearly interest 
some bond uh, that that is a coupon basically the half yearly coupon some bonds are paying the annual coupon some bonds are paying the quarterly coupon some bonds are paying the monthly coupon that depend upon the nature of the bond so that is a quarterly payment or monthly payment will receive to you the next characteristics that the fourth will be the bond must be rated by a certain credit trading agency and that credit rating agency either will give triple a to the uh, b uh, triple b minus or let's say double a plus or something rating will be there that rating will give the idea about the credit worthiness of that particular bond into the market so uh, whether it is invested graded bond or not investment graded bond i think sunny will uh, cover this part in the next slide that that is an important part with because when you when the bond is issued into the market as an investor we have to understand whether it is investment graded bond or not that that thing must be there number 5 will be the maturity or the redemption date or the repayment date will be there so the maturity will be let's take an example bond is issued for the 10 year today is 27th of august and company is coming with a bond that mature after 10 years so the maturity will be the 2034 uh august will be the maturity and this is just simple example will there it, it means that the, at the time of maturity the company is going to pay you the principal amount or the face value amount that you invested back to you that is a simple example of the plan vanilla bond and finally investor so anyone can be the investors of, of a bond like we can be the individual investor can be the corporate investors or can be the institutional investors okay that depending upon the issuance of the part but in a simple example if we'll say what bond is so bond is nothing but a financial instrument which a company issued into the market with certain face value having certain coupon rate and maturity date will be there and at the time of maturity company will pay coupon back to the investor and till maturity company will pay coupon to the bond holder so this is an example of the simple plan vanilla bond into the market this bonds first come as a primary market as a part of the nfo then it will be listed in the secondary market uh, on the platform of the nsc bsc other platforms are there where one can trade into the secondary market and it helps for the liquidity part for an uh, investors or the individual will be there so this is an exam uh, this is an idea about the basics of what what bond is so now, now the uh, sunny ji over to you for the next part thank you thank you so much uh, dr shimal uh, dr shimal uh, like we had discussed to make this webinar a little more interesting and it shouldn't be one sided conversation from myself or from dr shimal uh, what we have done is for all our participants we have added small polls just a multi choice question uh, that will help us understand our audiences we can present them better uh, i would request everybody to please participate in this poll uh everybody can see the poll right now on the screen i'll read out the question what describes you the best as an investor or whether you are a student you are a financial learner uh you are a financial advisor or any other so this is just to understand what the audience is better so that uh, dr shimal ji and myself we can go ahead and explain things more from that perspective uh i'll again repeat the question what describes you or your current role the best from the four options whether you are an individual investor you are a student you are a financial advisor or others uh we'll run this poll for another 30 seconds i request everybody to please participate we already have 80% people participating uh we are waiting for the balance also to please participate everybody can see on the screen let's try and make this more interactive more in interesting so that uh, we'll come up with two three more questions before we present the next slide we'll also uh, any future slides we'll do ask some questions to understand uh, the depth or the knowledge so that we can uh, try and uh, help you educate or help the whole initiative is purely from education perspective uh, i think we'll we'll end the poll we have almost 90% participation that is coming uh, but i request everybody to please do answer whoever is pending uh, uh, shibal ji should we move on to the next slide yes 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 Okay, we have an answer. Then, uh, definitely. Yes. So, uh, we understand that a lot of you are uh, fairly uh, almost forty percent of you are individual investors. Uh, there are over thirty percent students who have also there. Plus, there are a lot of financial advisors or distributors also. Uh, more than twenty five thirty percent. Uh, just to give you some perspective, who are a part of this uh poll today. Uh, just to add to what Dr. Shimal said. Uh, the first thing that we need to understand is. 
whenever you're making an investment in an instrument, first thing you need to understand is whether that instrument is regulated. Every bond that is currently available as an investment asset class, first thing you should check whether it is a listed instrument or it is not. Any bond which is listed will be regulated by SEBI. Any bond which is not listed will not be regulated by SEBI. Hence, I would urge any investor, any advisor to do ensure and check that through whomever you work as an advice or make an investment, do ensure that the instruments that you invest are regulated. It helps you to protect your principal, protect your money and also reach out to regulators who can help you solve your problems. So a lot of you guys are raising questions in the Q&A. Like Dr. Sripal said, uh, these bonds uh, are listed on the capital market as well as wholesale debt market segment. Face value for public issue is as low as 1000 rupees. For private placement till now has been 1 lakh rupee. SEBI has made certain initiatives that the face value or the minimum investment value in the wholesale debt market or the privately placed but listed bonds will come down to as low as 10,000 rupees. The biggest problem that was there in the bond market was being the bigger, big, being in big in size also, it wasn't accessible to our investors. With a lot of initiative from SEBI, support from SEBI, uh, education initiatives by Dr. Sripal, uh, 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 also online platforms are educating our investors, our distributors and increasing accessibility for these bonds. Now, uh, these were the basic characteristics, but one of the basic angles that a lot of people uh, want to understand is what, how do you understand equity though, there are a lot of advisors who keep on explaining, but on the bond space, what is it? Bond is something like an FD, but listed and rated and tradable. How do you differentiate between a bond and an FD? It's a financial instrument, which is listed, tradable, as well as rated. Right? Not all bonds are rated, but I would urge that whenever you look at investing in a bond, you should look at credit rating as an option. So the risk reward ratio works this way. If you see on the screen, a AAA bond is something which is relatively less risky. Are financial instruments risky? Answer is yes. Every financial instrument, whether it's an insurance, whether it's a equity, whether it is FD, whether it is mutual fund, whether it is fixed income, which is bonds. It doesn't, it does not change the fact that any investment, even if today you make an investment in real estate, that also has certain risk attached to it. But to assess, we have a SEBI registered agencies, which is like Crisil, ICRA, India Rating, Care, Acute. There are other rating agencies also, which rate a bond. These are SEBI registered neutral third party rating agencies, which give a third party opinion. Does this mean that it is 100% safe? Answer is no. There will be risks. Hence, it is very important to you to make investments, make any decisions based on informed decision making. And that is what we are enabling. That is the reason why today NISM has invited Dr. Srimalji uh, and me to ensure that our investors are educated or informed about whether before making any investment decisions. So the first thumb rule that we need to see is whether these are listed these are regulated or not. Second, what is the credit rating of a bond? The higher the risk, the higher the return. Simple, a risk reward ratio. A AAA bond will be more, uh, less risky, I would say. Not that it is risk-free, but it is less risky. Uh, a AA plus will be the next category, which will have relatively high risk. A AA, relatively higher. AA minus, if you see the graph goes from green to a red. Anything below triple B minus is a non-investment grade. It is called as a junk bond. So I would request that whenever you're making your investment journey or whenever you're advising your clients, the first thing that you need to see is what is the risk profile of the investor? I would never suggest you to take very high risk products without understanding the risk. And anything below triple B minus is a non-investment grade. In very crude word, it is also called as a junk bond. The higher the risk, the lesser the liquidity. Hence, the lower the risk, the higher the liquidity. Uh, coming to the aspect, these bonds, whichever are listed on the capital market segment, most of them, or on the WDM segment, most of them are rated. Hence, whenever you're looking at making an investment or you're advising your clients, 
First thing you need to understand is the risk of the client, the tenure of the client that he wants to invest and also the rating. This will derive or understand the risk reward ratio whenever you're making any such investments. Right. Uh, Sh uh, Shri would you like to add something to this? No, no, sir. Uh, that, okay. that is so uh, before we move on, uh, but probably... there are certain questions like if I can see like whether this uh, triple A rated or double A rated can be the risky, the default risk can be there or not. Absolutely. There is, like I said, there is no triple uh, A rating. It's a third party neutral opinion. Depending on the assessment that Rode, Crisil, Ikra, India Rating Care, Acute does, they give a third party opinion. It's helping you or guiding you to see and go through the uh, risk mechanism that is the, the risk attached to any investment. These rating reports are not very easily available. However, in case if anybody wants to see that, you can go onto these rating agency websites or a platform like ours wherein this is freely available uh, for your education perspective. Whenever you want to make an investment, I would also like to highlight, ensure that you go through two documents. The Bible of any bond is information memorandum, which has to be available with an online bond platform, which is a SEBI registered online bond platform. It can be any. Like ourselves, we are a SEBI registered online bond platform dealing only in listed bonds. So if you want to look at or go through an information memorandum, which has the terms of the terms and conditions of a bond, just like an equity prospectus, which is available with SEBI or with the lead managers, after the issuance is done, it is available on any platform. It is compulsory for an OBP to show it for all our investors. Second, the rating release also is available on, a pla on any platform of an OBPP. I would request before making an investment, please go through it. Ask your advisor, ask your relationship manager, ask questions. Only then make a decision and make a more informed decision. Right? Uh, uh, so we'll, we'll definitely take up the queries that are there on this towards the Q&A session. Uh, we'll probably, uh, we'll, we'll run another poll, uh, Shri Manji. Yes, yes, please. Yes. So uh, for all the audiences who have right now understood uh, the credit rating, how it works, we've raised the next question. What is the primary objective for investing in bond? Whether it is income generation, it is capital preservation, or it is diversification. Uh, just to understand the audiences better, again, this query is there. What is the primary objective? Whenever you are, basically, why are you attending this webinar? Is it when you want to invest in a bond, if you are an investor, if you are an advisor, or why would you want to understand this asset class? So I would request everybody to please do participate in this web, in this poll. It just helps us understand this better, whether it is for income generation, capital preservation, or diversification. Depending on the risk reward ratio, you guys can choose that what bond you want to invest. If you want to do capital preservation, then I would advise or I would suggest that you could look at something like a government security, which is above a AAA rating also because it's sovereign, because it is issued by GSEC, is issued by government of India. It is available through RBI Retail Direct also. It is available through any platform also. You can buy in DMAT form as well. So it's the lowest risk. They call it risk-free rate is GSEC. So it is above a AAA as well, which is called the lowest risk. Does not mean it is it's zero risk. It's the lowest risk. At the same point in time, it is also highest liquid. Right? Uh, I think a lot of people have already, more than 90% have participated. Uh, we have the answer. So 40% of the people say that it is for income generation. It's like passive income generation. When you are sleeping, it helps you earn interest. Uh, then there is capital preservation. So people who look at capital preservation, look at a, a higher rated bonds and for diversification, because if you have any specific asset class exposure, either real estate or FD or direct equity or mutual funds uh, on the equity space, then you want to diversify. That's when you invest in this, right? Okay. Uh, a lot of you guys have asked what is the risk reward ratio. So these are just some examples that we've created. This does not mean this is not an advisory. This is purely from education perspective that what is the tentative or expected return. It can be plus minus 0.5%. Uh, but whenever you invest in a central government bond, which is a GSEC, 
uh, government of India has issued, you can expect a return of anywhere between a 6.8 to a 7% kind of a return. Uh, in case, if you have a little higher expectation in terms of yield, then you can go for a AAA bond, which will be the likes of REC, NABARD, LIC Housing Finance, HDFC, these are AAA rated bonds that you could look at investing. Can What is the return that you can expect? You can expect anything between a 7 to 8%. There are various platforms that you can go and check. You can check with your broker. They can help you. Uh, you can you can do a little bit of Google and you'll be able to figure out what are the options available. Or you can go on any of the online bond platforms like ours. Then if you want a little higher return, credit access, Grameen, IIFL, uh, which would give you a return of anywhere uh, or a Hindu Jalalan Finance, they will give you a return of anywhere between an 8 to a 10% kind of a return, uh, which is like a double A rated paper, uh, which can give you some higher returns. So compared to an FD, a little higher return, but here you are increasing your risk reward. Then there are some uh, bonds which are A rated. Right. So obviously between a uh, A or a double A, there is double A plus also, and there is double A minus as well. Uh, but we are just try to make it more simple. Hence, we are giving the broad spectrums. Uh, a rated would be something like an ESA small finance bank or a Utkarsh or Spandana Spurti, where you can expect a return of anywhere between a 10 to an 11 and a half percent. In case if your investors have an expectation which is higher than 12, 13, 14 percent. Then you could look at a paper which is triple B plus rated or a triple B triple B rated, which is like a Manba or a Satya Microfinance. Anything which is below a triple B minus rated is a non-investment grade. That means you can expect a return which is more than 14-15%. Uh, however, these are higher risk products. You have to understand the risk reward ratio. Your financial advisor or your uh, or somebody who advises you would be the right person to uh, advise you on that. But these are some of the expectation or returns that you can expect from uh, the various bonds that are available. This is just a sample. It's purely from education perspective. Please do not, uh, please do not take it uh, that this is what is the return. It keeps on changes, changing its market driven activity. If tomorrow interest rate cuts, you will get a lower return. Just like tomorrow, yes, some days back, SBI would decide that they would give a ret lower return on the FD, or they will increase the FD rate. The same way, depending on the market scenario, the returns also changes. There is capital gain also as an option. There is capital loss also as an option. So you need to understand ke what you want to invest. If you hold to maturity, whatever return coupon or the yield at which you have invested, at a definite period, you will get your principal back. So your return is fixed. In case if tomorrow the yield changes, you are allowed to even sell this in the market because there is no lock-in for listed bonds unless until you bought a specific bond with that nature right uh Kabalji, anything that you would like to add uh, yes, so the some of the questions i can see related to the yield and the uh basically the returns are there okay so when we we'll say about the uh, yield part basically or the coupon when we we'll say the whenever the bond is issued certain coupon rate will be there so the coupon rate can be fixed but yield varies, that yield will be totally depending upon the three basic parameters. Number one is the time duration till the maturity will be there. Number two is the price that uh, you purchase and the price that you are selling into the market. So these three parameters will be uh, there when the bond, uh, when we calculate the yield. And yield is nothing but the internal rate of return or the required rate uh, that is there into the market. Uh, the yield can vary from individual to individual. Let's take an example. If uh, individual uh, into the market, there are two different age class people are there. One is able to take a higher risk. So he his yield will be somewhere higher as compared to the another person. And he will decide that if my yield rate is, let's say, 11%, so I should go with the A-rated bond because if I'll go with the GSEC, GSEC will never give you the yield of... Uh, 11% to you. Okay. Because when you, when you invest into the market, there are the yield curves available. 
on the platforms like the uh, Bloomberg or other platforms, if you can check it, the yield curves are there. So that yield curves will give an idea to you what will be the futuristic yield of the investment that you're making into the market. So 10 year GSEC will be there. So yield, yields, yields can be easily measured. So yield is nothing but the internal rate of return or the required rate that you are making into the market. And when you invest into the market, basically you have to correlate with the uh, your expected returns, that is the yield, with the risk profiling of yours. So that should be uh, very okay, that, that and really that helps. That will be helps to you. Correct, correct. Uh, before we move on to the next slide, uh, Dr. Srimalji, I, I think we should launch the next uh, just to, uh, poll. Uh, guys, I request all of you all, I, uh, the last poll had 93% participation. I request we would prefer that if you guys can participate, all of you, 100% of you all. Uh, so I'll read out the question. Which type of bonds are most interest, you are most interested in learning? right? Uh, whether it is government securities, whether it is municipal bonds, whether there are corporate bonds or high yielding bonds. So just to understand more perspective, what is the return that you guys can expect? Whether what is the return that is coming out of this? So there are state guaranteed bonds as well. There are high yielding bonds. There are corporate bonds, uh, which are uh, a little uh, high rated, but low, uh, low returns, which is like the REC, uh, NABARD LICs of the world. The government security is 6.827%. So just to give you some perspective. We have almost 85% participation. I request some of you have not participated. Uh, I would highly request you to please, please do participate to make this more interactive. Uh, we will be taking up your Q&A. We have a lot of queries that has come up in the Q&A section. Uh, We're almost towards the end of the presentation. There is uh, a next presentation, next slide will be explained by uh, Dr. Srimal, which will tell you the risks attached while investing in a bond. What are different types? So uh, just hold on and we'll definitely answer your queries in the Q&A section also, uh, right? So we'll wait for another 10 seconds. I request anybody who has not participated in the poll, please do participate. Uh, what type of bonds are you most interested in learning about? Whether it's government bonds, municipal bonds, corporate bonds, high yielding bonds, what are the different categories, right? Uh, we'll end the poll. Uh, thank you so much. We have almost 85% plus participation in this poll. Uh, we'll move on to the next slide, uh, Dr. Srimal, sir. So, uh, thank you. Over to you. Yes. So, if I can see the poll, most of the people are there, those who want to invest into the corporate bond where, they're there, where they can uh, expecting the return up to 11%, I think, if, if I'm not wrong on the poll part. Okay. But yes, uh, if you'll say about the risk when you that are involved into the investing in into these uh, fixed income securities or the bonds so like equity, whatever the instruments are there. All the instruments when you are investing into the market that is subject to market risk. That is the uh, most important part when you are when you have to understand. Because uh, when when I interact with some of the people, I generally found that bonds are not risky. That's why I'm investing into the bond or bonds are uh, uh, doesn't carry any other risk. But there are the examples in India and abroad also where the risk is associated. The first risk that I want to discuss that is the liquidity risk into the market. Definitely, when you invest into the bond for a longer time period, let's take an example. If I bond, I purchase a bond of XYZ company today and I hold till a uh, bond till maturity. So I don't have to bother about the liquidity risk into the secondary market. But if I want to sell that bond into the secondary market, there can be the risk, which is a liquidity risk, because it might be possible the bond is low rated, can be there. Or uh, another example, let's take an example, some municipal bond is there of the small town, which is not rated good, or the balance sheet of the municipal bond is not good. Mm -hmm. It will be difficult to liquidate into the market. Because when we want to liquid into the market, definitely we will see whether the buyers and sellers are available of that particular bond is there into the market or not. And bond market is very huge. The retail investor participate is less. So if I'm having a bond which value 1 lakh rupees to me and I want to sell that 1 lakh rupees bond into the secondary market, it, it might be difficult to liquid. But yes, uh, it will be liquid with the help of your primary dealers or the bond brokers. They will help you to liquid. But yes, the liquidity risk is one of the example of the bond will be there. Immediately liquidity cannot be happen into the bond part. Number two risk can be the fraud risk is there. So fraud risk, we can take an example of, let's take an example, uh, some company become 
done some fraud into the part or that bond is not regulated by the sebi or under not come under the purview of rbi or any other regulatory body and you purchase a bond that if that bond doesn't have any underlying asset as a part of the security or the guarantee or no a regulation part is there then the fraud will be uh, uh, there into the market and this fraud you can see there are uh, in the history also in the indian market also there are certain companies or in the foreign market also some companies are there which are which come under these fraud parts are there so when you are investing into the market you have to see whether that bond is regulated or not if that bond doesn't regulate it there can be a chance of uh, having the fraudness into the market. That, that is one of the part of the fraud uh, is there. The next is the credit risk is another example for you. Uh, when we'll say about when we invest into the market, there can be the credit risk will be there. Okay. And uh, there are the examples. Uh, suddenly, let's take an example. The triple rated bond is listed into the market and uh, the rating agencies or the regulation has taken certain action on that particular company and suddenly the rating fell down so there are the examples of uh, dhfl is there one of the example ilnlfa is one of the example where the rating has gone down due to the credit worthiness of a company the balance sheet are not performing the financial uh, uh, performance is not good of a company there are certain there can be certain management issues and due to this the credit rating has went down if the credit rating went down, suddenly the bond can be convertible into the credit risk and the liquidity will be not there into the market. And there are the examples also we have seen. So as we told, the triple rated can come into the B, triple B minus or lower category uh, uh, bond based on the due diligence done by the rating agencies. But when you are investing into the market, you yourself has to do the due diligence also because whatever the rating agency has done, that is done based on the best of their knowledge. But when you're investing into the market, you have to do your own research also before doing this. So credit risk can be there due to, uh, due to the credit risk, the rating of the uh, bond can go down and the examples that, that we discuss into the market also there. Now, some of the market risk is there. So when you say about the market risk, there can be the interest rate risk. Another best example of the interest rate risk uh, we can see in this last one and a half year or so, the Fed has uh, reduced their uh, interest rate, uh, like uh, so, increase the interest rate uh, like anything. And due to this, uh, some of the banks like Silicon Valley banks collapse due to the change into the interest rate of the Fed, because the interest rate or the yield and the price is inverted correlated and inversely correlated if the yield goes up of a bond the price will go down of a bond so interest rate risk is one of the most important market risks is there when you are investing into the market some other type of risk in the market is the there can be the inflation risk there can be the reinvestment risk is there uh, so the best example is that for example uh when you purchase a bond uh, uh 10 or 20 years before uh, and you are receiving a coupon of that bond every year and the coupon that you received at the time of COVID-19 period in India where the interest rate went down. So you are reinvesting that coupon at a lower rate of the market. So interest rate or that is the reinvestment risk of the uh, principal amount or the reinvestment risk of the coupon that you are earning from the market. So that risk can be there. There is one more market risk is there. The callable call risk is there. So when the bond uh, that we can say bond is issued for, let's take an example for 10 years, but before maturity, if company calls the uh, 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 bond to redeem from the market before the maturity, after five years, company feels, why should I give more coupon to the investors or to, to the lenders if I'm getting the same money at a lower rate from the market? Okay, so what the company will do, company will call the higher coupon uh, bond from the market and issue the new coupon or take a money from another source like the bank loan at a lower rate. So the company will call a, call a bond, so callable risk can be there. There can be the country risk also. Okay, at the market is there can be country risk also where the country become defaulter. And let's take an example. Uh, uh, the Argentina is one of the example where the government has declared their souvenir gold bond as a default. They, they don't want to liquid that particular bond. So that this is due to the economical instability and the political risk was there into the country. So these are the examples where you can see 
where the market risk is associated. So when you're investing into the market, you have to understand, or when you're investing into bond, you have to understand that my bond is associated with X, Y, Z, A, B, C, certain risk will be there. And if I invest into the bond, uh, into the lesser graded bond, already the bond is the B or triple B minus rated bond is there. So that already carries the high risk and suddenly that company become defaulter. So it will, it can create the liquidity risk for you. It can create the credit risk for you. It can create the market risk for you, or it can create the event risk also. The bigger event, like let's take an example of the COVID-19 is one of the examples. Subprime crisis is one of the example. There can be the n number of risk is associated. And when this risk is there into the market, you have to understand that this will affect the returns, this will affect the liquidity, this will affect the maturity value of your bond. And you, you can see the number of examples in the Indian market. There are uh, the examples of the island FS that I told you, DHFL is there, SARA is one of the examples. Th these are the examples are there into the market where the liquidity is an issue and challenges for the maturity at the time of maturity the money should come back to the investors and when when you are investing to the fixed income security our our perception is that it should not have certain risk but yes bond is also having a risk and this risk are major risk and if you see any of the global financial crisis if you go to the japan bond crisis the us bond crisis european bond crisis subprime crisis so when your gold bond crisis these all crises are there which are linked with the fixed income securities of the country because fixed income security mark size is much more bigger in the European and American market as compared to the Indian market. And the best example is Silicon Valley banks. That's a recent example. Suddenly, Fed has increased the rates. Silicon Valley bank collapsed due to the lesser value of the bond they have invested into the market. So you have to understand the risk which is associated in the fixed income security. And if you understand the risk, if you want to invest into the market of the fixed income security to understand the nature of a bond, you understand the risk of the bond. Again, the expectation, because as per the poll that you conducted, your expectation is to earn the 11% or 11.5%. If the bond is going to, again, suddenly the government is saying that the bank a bank rate is near about 6 to 7% and expecting 11% return from the bond, so risk is associated. You have to understand the nature of risk into the market. Okay, so this is uh, uh, from my side, Saniji, on the risk part. If you want to contribute anything from at your end, uh, you're welcome on this part. Absolutely not, Dr. Shimalji. I think you've covered uh, with the right example. Uh, and it really helps our audiences also understand. A few people have also commented that this gives a very good perspective. Uh, we will soon take up uh, the set of queries also uh, from the next slide. Uh, just one last poll we will quickly uh, uh, release for the audiences to participate. Uh, which asset class currently dominates your investment portfolio? Whether it is fixed deposit, whether it is direct investment or real estate or mutual funds. For example, if you have 100 rupee, out of 100 rupee, which is the maximum investment asset class that you currently invest in? Uh, I think I should have added, uh, instead of fixed deposit, I should have added bonds also. Uh, <laughs> I think I, I missed out on that, mm, at least some. But I'm sure uh, if bonds were dominating, we would not be taking this uh, investor education initiative, right? right? Yes. So which asset class dominates your investment portfolio? Uh, 70 people, 70% 70 of the people have already participated. Uh, I request everybody else also to do participate. Uh, 75, 76%, come on guys. I am really looking forward to you guys to participate. Simple hai. Fixed deposit mein aapka sabse aada paisa pada hai. Direct equities mein aap exposure lete hai. Real estate mein lete hai. Mutual fund. Vaisa to real estate sabse zada uh, normally paisa uh, invest karne ke liye lag jata hai. Because bada asset hai. Asset class hai. Uh, obviously SEBI has taken some initiatives for fractional uh, ownerships also through SME REITs as well. And REITs as well. Uh, but I am sure a lot of you guys uh, are investing in direct real estate. Uh, okay, we have like 89% people participated. Request others also to please participate. Uh, we'll, we'll just run this. Uh, we are almost towards the end. Now we'll be taking up the Q&A section as well. Uh, so uh, just to give you guys some perspective, 36% 35% uh, uh, of the people are in mutual fund, 10% approximately in real estate, 
direct equity is 35% and fixed deposit is still 21%. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm really sure that after this, probably this investor education initiative, uh, we will be seeing more of you guys to also evaluate bonds as an education, not from investment, but at least be educated. Don't make any investments if you're not comfortable, but do uh, ensure that you know about this asset class. SEBI has taken a lot of initiatives to ensure that it reaches out to retail audiences also. Minimum investment was as high as 10 lakh rupees, which is now got down by SEBI to as low as 10,000 rupees. Uh, we'll end the poll now. Uh, we'll move on to uh, the next slide. Uh, in this webinar series that we're doing today, uh, we will be covering six webinars at least. Every month we'll come up with one webinar. The next webinar that we intend to come up with is bonds versus other asset classes. So the reason why I asked that question is because a lot of you guys have invested in multiple asset classes. It's, it's not whether one asset class is correct or one asset class is right and the other is wrong. No, you have to diversify. You have to see what is your risk reward ratio. What are the pros and cons of every asset class? Is any asset class perfect? The answer is no. Is any asset class bad? The answer is no. It really depends on how informed decision you as an investor you take and you make the decision on which asset class. So the next webinar is just from information perspective and education. Not We are never going to say that any asset class like bond is good or equity is good or FD is good. All asset classes are good depending on a risk reward ratio that you can decide but make sure that whenever you make an investment, don't go by herd mentality. Sebi also keeps on saying that. NISM says that. Dr. Sripal or uh, Srimalji also educates that. That just because koi friend ne bula to invest mat karo. Educate ho and fair invest karo. And I'm sure you guys know all the initiatives that NISM is also taking. And that is the reason why they have uh, invited us also as India Bonds. Uh, as a Sebi registered OBBP. To ensure that whatever decision is made, it is made on the basis of correct information available. Accessibility is the biggest problem that as an OBBP we are trying to solve. Uh, uh, Dr. Srimalji, we'll move on to the Q&A section. Yes, yes, please. Okay. So next, uh, the next webinar also we'll definitely announce soon. Uh, but we'll first read out the questions. Uh, Srimalji, should I read out? Is that okay? Yes, yes, please, sir. You can. Okay. Uh, so the next question is, uh, what is the difference? Uh, this is by Dheeraj, uh, Dheeraj Gigi. What is the different difference between secured and senior secured bonds? So, uh, uh, Dr. Shimalji, would you like to take it? Should I take it? Yeah, you can take it. Then I'll okay. go. I'll, I'll take this. So Dheeraj uh, secured bonds. So just say Dr. Shimalji ne explained kiya tha. Uh, whenever you invest in a bond or whenever you invest in any asset class, hierarchy wise in terms of priority, let's assume that you invested in an ABC bond uh, of a company, ABC, you have invested in a bond. In terms of security, whether it's a secured bond or an unsecured bond, uh, basically most of the secured bonds are treated as senior secured bonds unless until explicitly specified. Any bond that you invest in terms of priority, a secured bond will be paid out first. Uh, unsecured bond will be paid out less uh, next in case of in case of liquidation of the asset example a company has raised 100 rupees has assets worth 70 rupees whenever those assets are liquidated in case if the company goes bust out of that 70 rupees a senior secured lender or a secured lender will be paid first an unsecured lender will be paid next like fixed deposits are unsecured so on priority it will be paid next Senior secured lenders will be paid first. Equity is the last priority in terms of security. So that's what is the basic difference between the two. Uh, uh, Dr. Shimalji, would you like to add something or that's no, right? that, that is perfect. Okay, we'll move on to the next question. Um, oh, okay, I think uh, one more question is the same. What is senior secured bond? Um, next question is... What is the minimum credit rating that one should consider for investing in the bonds of safety for safety uh, by Mr. Samir Nayak? So safety, I think it should be always considered as a triple A rated bond it should be the minimum you should go or the GSEC should be there because there can be the minimum part. Yes, but that depend upon person to person. If the person wants to take a risk, 
even we have seen in the indian market or the global market where triple a rated also become the triple b minus uh, bonds are there but Absolutely. yes it should be triple a should be the minimum secured you just have to diversify your portfolio by getting the minimum uh, return with the security should be considered as per my purview sunny ji if you have any absolutely appetite, absolutely if you have a low risk appetite you want a high uh, you are okay with a lower return invest in a government security a gsec which is risk free return and uh, which is considered as risk free return because that's the lowest risk next is a triple a depending on your risk reward ratio then you could look at investing in that i hope that answers you uh, answers the question next question is by mr pawan bhat uh, which says can huf invest in bonds what are the taxation liabilities attached to a bond? So, I it up? Yes, yes, you, you plus. Okay. So, uh, Pawanji, yes, as an HUF, you can make an investment in bonds. Uh, you should advise your chartered account, take advice from a chartered accountant. Uh, is it possible? Answer is yes, you can invest in bonds by HUF. I personally make investments through that because of taxation planning. Uh, but taxation is the same as tax labs. Depending on whichever tax lab you fall in, According to that, again, I'm not a tax expert. Uh, I would advise for any taxation related queries, request you all to please speak to any tax expert or a chartered accountant. But yes, to the best of my knowledge, it is as per your tax lab. Okay. So again, it will be considered as a long term or short term capital gain will be there if the bonds are listed into the market. So more than right. one holding is considered as a long term capital gain and less than one year will be considered as a short term capital gain will be there into the market and whatever coupon you're getting that coupon will be considered as a part of the uh, income to you it will come as a set tax left to you and for the long term and short term capital gain uh, as for the finance bill there are certain rates are there approximately i think 10 percent and 20 percent uh, uh, 10 or 20 percent is there which will be the taxation part you have to implement on this absolutely perfect perfect uh next question is by mr mohit dingwani how these credit rating agencies decide the credibility of the bond issuer? Uh, so Mohiji, uh, credit rating agency is a SEBI registered and a SEBI regulated agency. Uh, they go through the financials, they do the analysis, they uh, review the financials on quarterly and half yearly basis as well of companies. Uh, depending on various aspects that they go through, they have their internal analysts, they have their internal rules, they have their internal processes and it goes through a proper committee. And on the basis of that, the rating agency assigns a credit rating. It's an opinion. It's not a guarantee. It's a third party neutral opinion, uh, wherein they, uh, it's more for guidance for any investors. Okay. Um, next question is what is by Komal, what is private placement of bond? Okay. So, uh, the bond market segment is bifurcated in two segments, capital market segment, and wholesale debt market segment. Both these bonds, whenever you buy through at least an online bond platform or through an exchange, uh, these are basically listed bonds. Whenever a bond has limited number of investors, which is a maximum in the primary issue, like an equity IPO, hai, the same way whenever debt or issue, or issue is opened or a bond or an NCD issue is opened, they have an option to go through the private placement wherein maximum 200 investors can participate in a bond issuance. In case if there, it's not a private placement, then it is called a public issue, wherein it is open for retail as a whole. That is called capital market segment issue. So if you are buying a bond, which is in the private placement segment, the face value currently has been up to 1 lakh, which now SEBI with certain rules and conditions can go down to as low as 10,000 rupees. And in the capital market segment, the issuance is as small as uh, or the minimum investment is as small as 10,000 rupees. Like tomorrow, a public issue is opening up of Mutut, in which investors like you can invest as low as 10,000 rupees from any platform through a broker or anybody. That is the difference between the two, right? Okay. Uh, next question is, uh, okay, sir, is it? Okay. Next question is, Anshu Alumalai, uh, sir, is it possible a student can invest in bond? Can yes, you tell me a, some yes. basic process about the same? So anyone can invest into the bond. The thing is that you must have your proper KYC should be done. That is one of the part. Uh, you must have your DMAT account uh, uh, or with the help of your broker also, primary dealer also, you can invest into the bond. 
so your kyc document should be there when you'll serve the kyc the aadhar card pan card bank account details must be there anything else you want sunny ji a part of the kyc i i agree you have to do invest in a bond through any sebi regulated entity and uh, uh, they will be doing your kyc it is compulsory for them to do that as long as you uh, you would like to invest you can go ahead uh, there are some rules and conditions around minors uh, so that probably depending on your broker you can speak to them and they will guide you on the same right depending on whichever platform that you like to invest but as long as you are a senior uh, you are a major which is above 18 years i don't see there is any restrictions from that perspective right uh next question is nikhil uh, nikhil ji is asking which rating agency is more reliable out of these five uh, uh unfortunately all rating agencies are sebi regulated they are third party uh, rating agency opinions uh, there is no specific choice that probably i'll be will be able to like tell you but uh, i can some people have asked a question also if there are two rating agencies rating a bond and if one is given a double a rating and the other is given a double a plus uh, i can definitely uh, suggest to you that please consider lower of the two do not consider higher of the two always be safe that will be a better approach uh, dr shipal uh, shimal ji yes that to true to lower of the two must be the best always consider lower of the two risk reward ratio also should be uh, i think that question mr rajiv Bant bantwal ji has raised that question i hope that answers your question as well uh palak sajdev ji has said which two documents to be checked for bonds uh so two very basic documents there are more but one is the information memorandum or the disclosure document because that is the bible uh the second is the rating release or the rating rational that you should read plus you should go on exchanges and also go through the financials because these are listed bonds it is compulsory for all issuers to publish their financials please do go through them also do your basic thorough due diligence before making any investments okay uh how a uh, next question is vinod mukandan ji uh, how very often gsec have a yield less than fixed deposit is there any advance of gsec over fixed bank fixed deposit mm, vinod uh, Uh, Doctor Shimal ji, would you like to take that? Advance means I. Uh, if it is, I am assuming is there any uh, upside in investing in a GSEC versus a bank FD? So bank That's FD, true. yes, uh, there is one part is there the bank FD having a uh, if we consider in bank is a liquidity risk of a bank FD. So limit is maximum cap given by the RBI is five lakh rupees. That is the one part is there. Whatever the liquidity risk will be there, but in the GSEC there is no. Uh, Uh, maximum cap is there number one part, and there are certain G six of the state G six will be there. They they can offer higher yield as compared to the uh, bank FD at some point of time because currently bank FD, I, if I am not wrong, bank FD is currently giving near about seven percent uh, uh, interest to you. Okay, but at the same point of time, the G six are there available into the market where seven point five or eight percent yield is also there. Will be to you. So th this is one of the uh, part. Uh, part of this, Sunny Ji, if you want to add on this part. No, no, I I agree. You can expect a seven percent plus uh return in G S E C as well, depending on the tenure and higher liquidity, because it's easily uh, you can liquidate the same. Any broker or anybody can help you execute the same. Uh, next question is quite similar to that, but uh, we'll take that up. Ankur Desai Ji, ESAF Small Finance Bank. It's a small finance bank which has raised bonds. can banks other than small finance bank also issue bonds yes uh, the answer is yes correct or, absolutely answer is yes so any any bank or any institution uh, or any corporate can raise a bond with correct. the condition of the uh, sebi basically correct. so uh, all banks are allowed to issue bonds there are different types of bonds there are subordinate bonds uh there are uh, perpetual bonds there are tier 2 bonds there are various types of bonds issued by banks currently like if you look at isaf it is available at a 11.3% kind of a return uh on uh, any platforms that you look at buying the same way uh, other banks have also issued uh, bonds which are including uh, the likes of uh, psus like sbi bank of baroda these are also available however please remember perpetual bonds are a little riskier bonds they are just uh, in risk reward ratio uh, they are unsecured in nature so ensure whenever you are making these investments you are aware about this and taking more informed call please do talk to your advisor and your uh, 
uh, financial uh, guidance, whoever is guiding you, and somebody who is uh, licensed to advise you on the same. Right. Uh, next question is, uh, sir, if you could uh, explain, Anuj Sethiji, uh, what is the difference between uh, YTM? Uh, is the IRR based on yield to maturity? Is the IRR? IRR based on yield to maturity, YTM. Yes, yes, IRR and uh, YTM is same. So it is nothing but when uh, I am, for example, I am making an investment of 1000 rupees in any of the bond. For next five years, it will be keep invested. And uh, uh, that bond is going to give me the next five years certain coupon also to me. So that coupon is nothing but the interest I'm getting. Okay. And we know over the period of time, the value of money is def uh, uh, differentiating okay so it it will be uh, discounting by a certain rate okay and what uh, whatever money at the end i am getting including the coupon whether it is higher than the current value or not that i invested if it is it is higher than that is the more good example for me but minimum that return should be given to me so that will be the yield so whatever amount i invested over the period of time, maturity. So that is nothing but the IRR or the YTM is nothing but amount that you invested today. Over the period of time, you're getting the that amount back with certain coupon. Uh, so the inflow and outflow should be at least equal. At that, that should be your IRR. So it, it might be possible that my yield can be the uh, expected. It can be the eight percent, and that bond is giving me seven point five percent yield currently into the market. That's showing seven point five percent. So it is. It it can be decided that I should not invest into that bond because my expectation is eight percent. So I will select the bond which can meet my expectation of eight percent. So that is the yield uh, concept will be there basically. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, next question is by Mr. Sajil Seth. Uh, when will the new tax-free bonds IPO come up? I have not found since two thousand eighteen. <laughs> so unfortunately, Sajalji, I don't think so. Dr. Srimalji would also know or I would know. It is not publicly available. Uh, however, these bonds which were issued in 2018 or before than that, they are available on platforms as tax-free bonds. Returns are obviously different because that time somebody is invested versus today. But in the secondary bond market, you can definitely look at uh, buying this. So I would urge do a little bit of research, speak to a few of your uh, brokers or look at platforms online and maybe you will be able to find something. But right now we don't have any public related information that these bonds are coming up, government is coming up or not because we wouldn't know that. Only when publicly available. Right. Uh, what is the tax implication of investing in a bond? Uh, Mr. Mohammed that, that We have discussed tax part with that. Right. We have already, we have already uh, answered this. Uh, just to give a refresher, uh, it's as per tax lab, TDS is directed on all listed bonds at 10%. Uh, and uh, there is long term and short term capital gain tax that is available uh, as per the requirement. Right. Uh, Milinji, aapka bhi same query hai. Uh, what is short term and long term you have added to that? So long term capital is in case capital gain is when you hold on to a bond and sell it in the secondary market after one year. If your holding period is more than 12 months then you get long-term capital gain in case if you sold it at a higher price. Example, you have bought something for 100 rupees, 110 rupees, but if you have hold it for one year, then long-term capital gain will be If it is less than one year, then you will short-term capital gain. Lagega. And in mutual funds, the same thing for long-term is 36 months, if I am not wrong, Dr. Srimal ji. So, uh, so fixed yeah, no, 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 fixed income, if the bond is not listed, in Haan. the year, then 36 months is there. That is correct. That is correct. For listed bonds, it's more than 12 months. For listed month is uh, more than 12 months. Okay. Uh, next question is by Mr. Naveen Kumar. Is SEBI having rights to eliminate or control non-regulated bonds in the market to safeguard investor capital? Uh, uh, Naveen ji, uh, yes, SEBI is there definitely to protect investors. Uh, they are trying their level best by uh, having NISM as one of their institute to take these education initiatives. That's when they have invited us. Uh, we are driving our level best uh, to educate and inform the audiences that look at regulated products. That is very limited that we can do. We cannot stop somebody from getting into any wrong advice or wrong in instruments. But we request that 
uh, please do invest if you want to make investments in any of the regulated products. Like it can be whether RBI or SEBI or anybody, but do look at investments only in regulated products, right? Uh, so one uh, audience, uh, Dr. Shiman sir has requested, can you explain credit risk a little bit once again? Okay, so uh, just giving again in depth uh, some about the credit risk. Credit risk is nothing but when you invest in any of the bond, let's say, let's take an example, the bond is triple A rated currently today into the market, bond is triple A rated. And based on the triple A rated, you are invested into the bond for a longer time period. Okay, and over the period of time, we can see the uh, economical condition is changing, the political risk is also there, the global risk is also there, the company risk is also there into the market. And after a certain time period, again, the evolution is done by the credit rating agency, whether whatever the evolution that we have done for that particular bond, whether it is or the company that is particularly right or wrong. Okay. And suddenly the company will found that uh, since last uh, five years or three years, the balance sheet is not good of a company. There is a loss into the uh, company's part, most of the cases. So the company, the credit rating agency will fill at the time of maturity, if the companies doesn't have the sufficient fund to give the coupon to the investors or doesn't have the sufficient reserves to give money back. So what the credit agency will do, it will degrade the rating of the company from AAA to let's say double B or triple B minus something like can be there. So this is an example that we have discussed. Even ILNFS is one of the best example. DHFL is one of the best example is there. Okay. And suddenly the rating went down. If the rating went down, it means that is the credit risk is there. So it says that the rating agency is saying that company currently doesn't have the sufficient fund. So risk is associated when the maturity will be there. And if you hold this type of bond, bond will be there for the over the period of time that if the company become defaulter, there will be the risk. So uh, these are certain examples uh, that we can say of the credit uh, risk into the market okay and uh, there, there, there can be the credit risk of uh, different uh, even uh, government also of certain countries also can can be a credit risk but yes it is nothing but the credit spread over there over the period of time so that is from my side uh, sunny if you want to add something on this part uh, no absolutely dr Srimanji. i think you're covering it perfectly just one question that few two three people have asked again uh, if you could explain the difference between a coupon and a yield, sir. So, coupon and a yield, coupon is nothing less than example, very simple example I am taking. If the bond is issued into the market at 10% coupon rate, okay, 10% coupon rate. So, 10% interest rate that we are in general terminology, we are saying that interest. So, interest is known as a coupon. That 10% you are getting fixed on a face value over the period of time of a holding. But yield can be higher than 10%. Yield can be lower than 10%. That you have to understand. Because that bond is traded into the secondary market. So the, when you purchase a bond at a face value of 1000 rupees, that bond is available now in a market. Let's take an example at 7, uh, 9,980 uh, 9, rupees. It is currently sellable into the market at 980 rupees. So in the secondary market, you're purchasing that bond at 980. And again, you'll hold that bond till maturity. At the maturity, you are going to receive 1000 rupees. So that yield will be there. So yield and price is inversely correlated. It means if the price, if the yield of a bond is high, the price will be lesser. In, it means that if the bond is traded at 980 rupees, so that bond will give higher yield than the coupon. And if the bond is traded at 1,010 rupees, so that bond yield will be lower than the coupon. That you have to understand. The yield can vary from coupon. And if the yield and coupon will be same, then the market price of the bond and the uh, uh, face value will be same. Understood? So yield can vary. So yield can vary that depend upon the market demand and supply. Yield can vary depending the time to maturity. Yield can vary depending to the current market price. So yield can have the various uh, uh, permutation combination. Even yield can vary due to the interest rate also. That is a long term G6 or the Fed rates or the RBA rates. Yield can vary. So this will be varied. But yes, coupon will remain fixed till the maturity. Yield will not remain fixed. Sir, can you also add uh, how interest rate uh, affects bond prices? Because a lot of people, three, four people have asked. So yes, so how interest rate affects the bond prices? 
uh, interest rate simply affect the bond prices because uh, if that bond is, uh, I'm just giving this another simple example to you, if that bond is, uh, when, when we so issued, let's say five years before, when the interest rate was near about, uh, I think, uh, uh, five years before, uh, I think near about 7% or less than 7% was there. Okay. And suddenly, uh, or another example, if you go to the uh, US market where the interest rate was almost less than 1% was there. Okay. That time the bond prices was high. And Fed has increased the interest rate. If the interest rate is increased, it means another opportunity is there into the market. The liquidity of the bonds will be uh, there. So there is a interest rate affect the market. Long term yield will be higher. So uh, another example, if I say, let's take an example. Currently, the interest rate or the yield rate is 7.5%. In future, the yield rate is showing that the 8%. It means the long term prospect is higher for the uh, holding of a bond. So yes, interest rate affects the bond price because when the interest rate change as an investor or as a uh, trader what i will understand that over the period of time if interest rate will go up the bond price will go down because that is an inverse relation as a part of the calculation that we have to understand because till the maturity if the interest rate will high the prices will go down of a bond because that 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 affect the interest rate affect the, uh, that consider as a discounting rate of your bond that that consider as a discounting part so when you do the calculation of a bond Yes, it will reduce the price of a bond. So if interest rate high, it will higher discounting. So that is considered as a discounting part. Agreed. Uh, sir, a lot of people are asking the difference between a debenture and a bond. So uh, in a single terminology, if, you, if I'll say the bonds are generally issued by the uh, uh, government institutes or we can say the PSUs and debentures can any corporate, even corporates can also issue the bonds. But yes, debentures are mostly, mostly issued by the corporate. Number one part is there. Uh, bonds are more secure. Debentures are lesser secured uh, uh, that we can say. And uh, uh, the debentures uh, can have the uh, liquidity position when the company become default, for example, the repayment will be given to the first priority will be given to the bond holder. Then the debenture holder will be there. And usually uh, bonds are non-convertible, whereas the debentures can be convertible also. These are some of the uh, difference. Otherwise, uh, all the corporates or the companies, they can say it can be the debentures and the PSU or the government or the municipals, they are saying the bonds. That is the uh, major difference between the bonds and debentures. Saniji, if you want to add something on this part. Absolutely. Uh, private sector corporate issuing, uh, private sector corporate uh, issues a debenture, debenture. A public sector issues a bond. That's the basic difference. The Both of them are very similar identical instruments, just two different names. Uh, then depending on the type of bond, whether it's secured, unsecured, or a debenture which is secured, unsecured, have a look at it, go through the information memorandum. Right? Uh, some people are asking the difference between an FD and a bond. I would request please attend our next webinar. We will definitely uh, covering the uh, doing a proper apple to apple comparison and we will be covering uh, the same. Uh, next question is uh, what is the time till which we can Samay Patel till which we can hold bonds in our portfolio? So time that depends upon individual to individual. Correct. So it is your choice. There is no restriction in terms of how long you want to hold. If it's a five-year bond, you can sell in two days also or one year also, depending on the liquidity of the bond. And also you can hold it till maturity and, and on the maturity rate, uh, you will get your principal back, uh, Samaji. Right. Next question is uh, Karp Karpaka Rajanji saying, uh, even investors in Yes Bank, subordinate bonds have lost. So uh, let me add to this uh, first, uh, uh, Karpagaji, that Yes Bank bonds which were invested were not subordinated debentures. They were perpetual bonds, which is higher risk compared to a subordinated bond. These are called tier one capital bonds. Uh, right now, whatever bonds that are available of Yes Bank in the market are either infrastructure or a sub subordinated bond. It is not a perpetual bond. So between the two, what a government has taken some actions is on perpetual bonds and not on subordinated debentures. Uh, Dr. Srimalji, would you like to uh, add something to that? Okay. Uh, next question is, why fixed deposit is unsecured? Uh, 
why <laughs> would probably we wouldn't know but as of now majority of the uh, fixed deposit that are issued are unsecured maybe dr shimal ji if you have any points so fixed deposit that, that uh, told earlier so it is a cap of 5 lakh rupees so if i am having the deposit of all the bank account with uh, let's say 50 lakh rupees of fixed deposit i am having and suddenly my become, bank become defaulter so rbi is liable to pay me the 5 lakh rupees that's why it is a unsecured that i can say uh, there is no uh, upper limit beyond 5 lakh. And that, that was revised, I think, two years before only. Earlier, it was 2 lakh rupees only. Correct, correct. So, uh, we are actually over short of time. We have a lot of questions. Uh, Ishwaranji is asked, there is no risk by in investing in bonds by government of India. Uh, answer is, it's the lowest risk. Uh, Currently, it is the lowest risk that, that, we, that we can say. But yes, there are the countries over the globe where the country become defaulter. So, uh, Argentina is one of the example or the I think Iceland at the time of subprime crisis is one of the example. Correct. Currently, become defaulter. So, currently in India, yes, it is a risk free. But the zero risk, you can say. Correct. Absolutely. Uh, I think we've overshot time, sir. Uh, we've answered over 70, uh, 67, 8, 70 queries. Uh, we've tried to cover as much as possible. Uh, in case if there are any queries, please reach out to NISM or India Bonds and we'll be more than happy. Uh, I think uh, we've overshot by 15 minutes. Mm, uh, the next webinar we'll be hosting very soon uh, with NISM, which is uh, on bonds versus other asset classes, wherein we'll have a basic uh understanding of bonds versus fd equity mutual funds uh, uh so we'll try and request all of you all to do participate in that as well uh unfortunately due to time paucity uh Sribalji, would you like would you want to take one two more queries uh not an issue for me if uh, you're open so yeah i'm absolutely okay we'll take another five queries at least uh i think we've already answered what is the difference between bonds and debentures so i'm not taking that question up uh, next is Janvi Sudharamanji. Investments of bond can be made through DMAT account. Yes, uh, it can be made. Correct. So, Janvi ji, majority of the bonds that are issued currently are in DMAT form. Uh, you can use your existing DMAT account and make investments. You don't have to open a separate DMAT account for uh, bonds, at least which are listed on the NSA and BSE exchanges. You can buy through any semi registered OBPP and you can use your existing demand accounts also, unless until they say that they want a separate demand account. But majority of the people allow you to make investments using an existing demand account. So you have only one demand account where all the pool of assets are uh, there. So uh, to just to answer to your question. Uh, next question, question I can yeah. see what is the 54 EC bond? I think two to three times. Uh... Sir, please, please do take it up. So the 54 EC bond is nothing but uh, it is the bond, a special type of bond which are issued by the, uh, uh, like uh, uh, in India especially it is issued for the, for the offer of the exemption of the uh, tax on the long term capital gain that we can say and it is backed by the government. So the institute like the National Housing uh, Highway Authority of India or Rural Electrician Company, uh, so any backed by government can issue this particular bond. But generally, the uh, lock-in period is the five year of this particular uh, bond. These uh, five years will be there. Okay. And uh, the maximum limit that one can invest in one financial year is the 50 lakh rupees uh, will be the uh, part. Otherwise, uh, uh, these bonds are uh, like uh, on the particular part of the uh, tax. So, there is no TDS on this particular bond is there into the market. So, maximum cap is 50 lakh rupees and these are the government of India backed institutions or the corporations issued this particular bond. So, like the power finance corporations or IRFC, they issued this type of bonds into the market. Correct. Okay. Uh, next question is Tyrus Almeida ji. So, they are asking is primary market accessible to retail public? Yes, the answer is yes for the GSEC also and for the corporate bonds also. Both the markets are accessible to the public. Absolutely. Even tomorrow, Mutut's public issue is also opening up. So you yes. can uh, also look at investing in the primary market. It's on first of first of basis. What is meant by PSU? Project the uh, public sector undertaking is what we were referring to. Apologies if I've used the terminology. Uh, public sector undertaking means public sector uh, companies question is uh, bond and debenture if company defaults are we getting our investment back yogeshwar ji 
if company defaults are we getting our investment back so uh, if company defaults at the time of liquidity uh, if the funds available with the company yes definitely you will receive your investment back but uh, it's subject to total liquidity position of a company correct will be done at the time of liquidation then only uh, it will be the possibility right uh, arnob tiwari ji is asking uh, good evening sir other than sgbs what are the other types of bonds a beginner investor can choose to invest uh, arnab uh, arnab ji the most safest or the least risky i would say is government securities or sdls which are state development loans which you could look at investing uh, or a triple a rated bonds uh, that you could look at investing as a big name next question is uh, how to differentiate between a listed and a non listed bond so if listed bond is there it will be available on the platform like nsc bsc or uh, uh, other website but non listed bond uh, details will be not available on the exchanges correct correct and if you are operating or working through a sebi registered broker or a sebi registered online bond platform uh, obps are only allowed to in uh, advise or not advise but available on their platform uh, if those are listed bonds so it is compulsory for all obpps uh, in their website whenever you go into the bond detail page whether this bond is secure or is listed unlisted secured unsecured everything everything is already there and it is compulsory for uh, all obps as it's a mandate from sebi that they have to show that whether it is listed or unlisted first thing as an obpp you are not allowed to show unlisted bonds because it's not regulated by sebi right uh, next question is what is meant by bullet redemption and what is a callable bond or a puttable bond or what is a call or a put option so the bond is having the options like uh, there are two types of bond we can say one is the option amended bond number two is the plain vanilla bond so generally the bonds which are issued into the market they are the plain vanilla bond but yes if bond is having the option amended bond so at, before maturity the company is having a right to call company is having a right to call that is right to redeem call back the bonds before the maturity and the puttable bonds are there so investor is having a right to put to the company before the maturity that depending upon the position let's take an example if i am an investor i have purchased the bond which that bond is giving me the coupon of 6.5% into the market and the yield is 6.8% let's take an example simple example but as the investor i am find i i can see uh, if bond is not available for trade into the second secondary market if I, if i can see if the bond is puttable bond uh, or the option embedded bond and if i can see into the market another instrument like the fixed deposit is uh, deposit is giving me the 8.5% return okay so what i can do so i will invest into the 8.5% return to invest into the 6.5% coupon so what i will do i will just put this bond to the company back and invest the money into the uh, fixed deposit so when the alternative options are there with the from the company perspective if the, they can borrow the fund at a lower rate then they can call and from the investor perspective if we can invest the same fixed income security or the same rated bond with a higher yield we can invest into the other bond so this is an example of the callable and puttable bond is there sanjeev you want to add something on this part no, sir i i think i agree with uh, what uh, you said uh, avinash ji uh, 54 ec we have already answered um, next question is are bonds stored in demat account answer is absolutely yes there may be a, a non demat dematerialized also but majority of the bonds today issued are uh, in demat form itself um, we'll take one last uh, last question. question yes we can take yes. yes. uh, where to invest in bonds online brokers like grow zeroda are they safe or direct through rbi retail app or through uh, bhavya agarwal has asked this question or through any online bond platform yes bhavya ji you can make an investment through any of the platforms depending on the availability uh, do check multiple platforms ek bar check kijiye jahan pe jo available hai rbi retail direct ke through also you could look at buying any uh, government securities or you can buy through zeroda's or the grows of the world or through an online bond platform or any through online bond bond platforms that is main, main thing is the liquidity must be there wherever you are selecting a platform that platform must have the liquidity to you absolutely absolutely correct uh, avinash ji we've answered your 54ec uh, multiple times we've got that question
sorry babaji we have uh, already taken up your question so we will not be able to take that up again uh, okay uh, i think uh, uh kapil there is uh, we have taken up a lot of questions yes, lot of questions. yes. Uh, i'm really sorry for missing out on any of the questions that we would have missed out uh, we've answered uh, 89 questions to be precise uh, <laughs> so due to limitation and positive we over overshot the time already uh, but however, we'll definitely look forward in case of any queries, please feel free to write to NISM or to us uh, in case if there is any help that we could be of, we'll be more than happy to uh, assist or uh, answer your queries and uh, do have a look at uh, our next webinar coming up uh, soon and we'll try to address as many queries as possible. Right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, NISM team uh, for your uh, for your for inviting us for this. And Dr. Srimalji also for uh, helping me with this session. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay, for giving your time because uh, as a corporate, it's a working day for you and I can understand market yeah, time. Yeah, sir. Till the time we don't educate, we will not see this bond market grow the same way how we've seen equity market. Yes. Equity is, uh, some, is a very big example. Today, everybody understands the same thing. We are doing accessibility reach for our investor audience and more importantly, informed investment decision making. Pragya, over to you. Good evening, everyone. I am Pragya from NISM. Uh, before we wrap up today's session, I want to take a moment to express my heartfelt thanks to our incredible speakers, Dr. Kapil Srimal and Sri Sunny Mirchandani. Your insights and expertise have truly made this session valuable. We appreciate the time and effort you have put into sharing your knowledge with us today. I would also like to extend my gratitude to all the participants Thank you for taking the time to join us and for your active involvement throughout the session. We hope you found the webinar informative and inspiring and we look forward to seeing you in our future events. Thank you once again. Have a great day ahead.